The Lowrider ST, what did Harley Davidson get right? Let's talk about it. All right, what's going on YouTube? FXCLS Brooklyn is back in the building. As you can see, it's the beautiful fall out here in the great state of New York. And we're gonna talk about some of the things I think Harley Davidson really knocked out of the park with the Lowrider ST. And thing number one, which is probably not the most exciting thing if you're not somebody that puts down heavy miles, but if you're someone that does the bike trips and you do heavy mile days, then you know how important and how nice it is to have this thing right here. That's right, that is cruise control. And that is something that is really nice to have when you're putting in the heavy mile days. You know, that's one of the things that I fell in love with with my Dyna Lowrider S was the fact that they gave it cruise control. And again, if you're putting in the heavy miles, my oh my, is that a nice thing to have. The second thing I think they got right on this bike is I can't really put my finger on what makes it so good, you know, because it seems a pretty similar brake setup than what I have in my Dyna Lowrider S. Whatever they change with the braking on this bike, I said before in the other videos, this bike brakes really, really noticeably well. Whatever they got uh, going on with the brakes, you know, obviously it's dual disc. They definitely knocked it out of the park. The bike stops really well. The next thing that goes without saying is after putting a good amount of miles on it, I'm a big fan of this Milwaukee 8 117. You know, honestly, I think it's the perfect size for this bike where it still feels like a monster motor. It still feels like you have a lot of power but i also noticed it could handle doing the urban riding it runs cool enough to do the stop and go of new york city and brooklyn and yeah i was i was happy with the power band in the motor i think they got it right with that and i've ridden the 107 milwaukee 8 i've ridden the 114 and now i've ridden the 117 and i could tell you that after putting miles on this 117 i would not be finding myself going back down a part of me really wants to know what a 131 would be like with these milwaukee eights but i'm trying not to uh get too crazy here so again i'm happy with that 117. another thing i think they got right with the spike is i think they got the foot controls right they are technically they, they go and they say that they are mid controls but i'm going to call them forward mids they're going to be a little bit more forward than, say, an FXR or an early model Dyna. And I was really happy with the seating position. You know, again, I'm 5'7", so I'm not a forward control guy. That's not something that I deal with. I run mid controls on all my bikes. And again, the riding position and where your feet kind of touch, again, for my height, felt perfect, where I was comfortable on the long mile days. But I also felt like I was tucked in enough to have to have enough control of the bike and be able to throw it around in the twisties when I wanted too so i think they nailed the controls with this bike you know i wouldn't i wouldn't change that i wouldn't put it more forward or more mid or anything they're nice and probably the other elephant in the room of something that we think that they got right is definitely that fairing man they knocked that thing out of the park it straight up cuts through the wind i've said it before in all my previous videos but you know it's clear that they put in the time it's clear that they put in the research on this and i'm super happy with it man so i wouldn't touch it i wouldn't touch the windshield height the fairing design is great they knocked that out of the park if you're buying this bike, that's probably a big reason of why you are buying it. So, so I mean, good on them. There's really no reason to be running a retro FXRT fairing. If you have a soft tail, you know, you might as well just go this route, go the ST route. They did their homework. They got it right. <laughs> And I'll do a separate video specifically on the bags. I'm not going to go into details, but after using the bags a lot, after having my passenger use the bags a lot and talking about it and thinking about it, I'm going to go down to saying that they did get the bags right on this bike. They're really good, y'all. They're really good, especially for a stock bike. Um, again, I'll make a separate video kind of going into why I think that is after this. I'll, I'll film that right after I do this one, but I do think they got the bags right on this bike and yeah, man, I think that's it. The other thing, and obviously it's not exclusive to this bike, but inverted forks as well as the monoshock technology after putting the miles on this, you know, obviously they got that right. The suspension on this bike is sick. They nailed it. They knocked that out of the park. If I ran this bike, you know, I know some of the aftermarket companies are starting to make um, upgrade suspension for this to maybe lift the bike up a little bit or quote unquote make it better. But honestly, for the riding I did on this bike, suspension was dialed in, suspension was great. I wouldn't be changing that. So I feel like they definitely got the suspension right on this bike. And yeah, man, that's after putting a lot of miles on it. 
So things that maybe they could improve for the next iteration of lowrider STs. Well, it's going to be the ones, it's going to be the things that probably everybody says, you know, like, I don't know if I've heard many people say this, but I said this in a previous video. I just really don't like pegs. I think um, in another iteration, if they put like mini floorboards or MX style pegs or something that's just not the cylindrical peg on a bike that you're going to be doing heavy miles on, you know, you're already coming through with an amazing fair you're coming through with amazing bags so you might as well go all the way and you know not put pegs on there so that's one thing i think could be upgraded in the next iteration the other thing is the thing that everybody talks about which is this thing down here which is the fact to run those um shotgun pipes right you have to the, the bags are cut higher on the one side as you can see that and this is the thing that everybody's always saying in the comment section you know anyone who hates on this bike usually brings that up first but honestly i really don't care <laughs> for me I'm, I'm not i think it's a damn good looking bike don't get me wrong but i'm not buying this bike to have um the best looks or whatever i'm buying this bike for straight raw performance and that's what this bike is but again you know most people i know are going to be throwing a two into one on this bike so in the next iteration and just to get people to stop complaining about it <laughs> if i was harley davidson i'd probably do something about the you know the the fact that one bag is sitting higher than the other you know but again me personally that would not stop me from buying this bike you know that does not bother me enough where i wouldn't buy the damn thing you know and then the other thing um it, it didn't really drive me crazy a lot of people are talking about the gauge situation here where it's not like a true gauge that's what's on the lowrider s standard I, honestly, you know, I, I do like gauges. If I had my preference, I would have just a more mechanical, you know, a more standard gauge on there rather than the digital. That's just me. But again, that's not something that would be a deal breaker for me. I would not be stopping myself from buying this bike just because uh, just because it had a digital gauge. But, you know, that's just me. And the last thing, again, the, I, I said this before in my other videos, I think the seat would be the first thing I would replace. I just didn't like the stock seat on there. So, you know, no one's going to do it better than Saddleman. It just is what it is. But um, one thing, again, I would definitely change out would be the seat for this bike. And then the last thing I'm going to say about something that I think they should add for the future iterations of the Lowrider ST would be adding passenger pegs you know because actually this bike did not come stock with these we had to put those on so jenny could come get some miles with us so i feel like they should they should offer passenger pegs on this bike that would be that'd be good for me man i'd be happy with that you know but again for the dyna lowrider s it was the same thing they did not offer that bike with passenger pegs so it, it didn't really surprise me but that would be nice to have so that's it y'all that's how i feel about it i think overall this bike is a home run overall they could not change anything and i think this bike is still going to be amazing but that's more just kind of like wish list icing on the cake stuff that i would be happy to have that where i wouldn't have to change it to aftermarket stuff but overall like i said hands down you know what you're getting out of the box on this thing is unreal so any of the things that i mentioned is not enough like i said for me to not buy this damn thing the package that you're getting out of the box is is just hands down the best thing uh to come in a very long time for us performance harley riders and that's it y'all as always stay safe stay low ride fxrs ride fxdx's ride sts and on that fx sales brooklyn is out